From the beginning, Joyce Sterling was anything but reserved, demure, or shy. She was born in Hollywood, California to her parents, Henry and Lillian Sterling, and has one sister, Marcia. Joyce's cousins, Larry and Edie, grew up with her as well, and they spent a few childhood years living all together on a chicken ranch in California. If you couldn't tell from that first baby picture, Joyce's childhood foreshadowed much of her future and her career. Oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Having spent time on a ranch as a child, Joyce learned some valuable life lessons she would later apply to her career. And on this farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O. Joyce learned early on what it takes to move a cow. While living on the ranch in California, a cow escaped and got stuck in a big drainage ditch. Her father worked unsuccessfully for hours trying to get the cow out. Finally, a neighbor came to the rescue and suggested that they build stairs out of hay bales. Sure enough, the cow climbed the stairs and made her exit. And on this farm he had a chicken, E-I-E-I-O. When she was a child on the ranch, Joyce and her cousin took baby chicks that had been hatched a few days earlier. They thought they could teach the chicks to fly. This incident was particularly foreshadowing for Joyce, who went on to dedicate a good portion of her career to empowering women in the law and, in her own way, teaching chicks to fly. Perhaps hailing from the land of the rich and famous explains Joyce's choice of hairstyles over the years. She may have also missed her Hollywood calling when she gave up on ballet, tap, and modern dance. Joyce admits this occurred right around the time she realized that boys were interesting. During elementary school in California, Joyce wanted to be a scientist. She was always a serious student and hated missing class, a healthy habit that persisted all the way through graduate school. Our day will come. Even early on, Joyce was committed to empowering women, and she participated in many female organizations, including the Campfire Girls in elementary school, the Girls League Student Government Organization, and we think she may have founded the Jackettes in high school. Her annual high school dance was called the Snowball, and each year the Jackettes had a Hawaiian theme party, very foreshadowing of her future time in Honolulu and Denver. Joyce is the first to admit that she has a history of choosing higher education institutions based on location, location, location. Following high school in Culver City, Joyce attended the University of California, Santa Barbara, and received her BA in sociology. In one college class, Joyce received the assignment of taking on a social change in her life for six weeks. So, she decided to start smoking cigarettes. Her parents found her behavior appalling and assumed that it had to do with the bad boy she was dating. But Joyce received an A on her paper, which was titled, Puff, the Magic Change. <coughs> Joyce was such a conscientious student that even when asked about her all-time most embarrassing experience in school, she claimed it was the time she forgot to bring a blue book with her to her calculus final. Are you sure it wasn't the time when you showed up to class in your bathing suit? Yeah, more on that later. After her first job in the personnel department for the city of Los Angeles, Joyce went back to school for her master's degree at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. She stayed true to her habit of choosing institutions of higher education based on location, location, location. Throughout graduate school, Joyce remained a responsible and conscientious student, but she did manage to enjoy everything Hawaii had to offer. In fact, as mentioned earlier, one time she spent a little too much time surfing with friends in Waikiki and had to rush back to campus for a lecture. Joyce will not confirm or deny that she burst into the lecture hall wearing her bathing suit, but we have the picture to prove it.
During her first summer of graduate school, Joyce was offered a scholarship to attend the University of Wisconsin-Madison for six weeks, where she had the opportunity to work with major scholarly figures in the law and society field. That must have been one heck of an opportunity. Who in their right mind leaves Hawaii to go to Wisconsin? After receiving her master's degree, Joyce took a teaching position at a small liberal arts school in Halifax, Nova Scotia. She taught in Canada for two years before attending the University of Denver for her PhD. While Denver is a far cry from the beaches of Santa Barbara and Honolulu, compared to two years in Canada, Denver is pretty much tropical. Maybe this explains her attempts to ski into a hot tub? Joyce reported having quite a lively group of friends while in graduate school. After receiving her PhD, Dean Robert Yegi offered her an assistant professor position with DU, and as they say, the rest was history. Joyce is actually the only professor at the law school who is not a lawyer. She lives her entire life surrounded by lawyers. But she brings a great perspective to us as lawyers. She studies what the, what the law is about and how people practice the law and teaches us all more about the practice of law than we ever knew. Joyce taught classes like law and society, criminal justice, and the use of social science in the law. When lawyers got in trouble at, uh, during the Watergate era, a beneficial consequence uh, came out of the debacle. We now have a field called Legal Ethics and Legal Profession. Joyce was there in the early 70s, and she's still at the forefront of, quite seriously, uh, studying and documenting the experiences, not only of all American lawyers, but in particular of women and minority lawyers. For almost 20 years, Joyce was involved with the development of judicial performance evaluations for judges in Colorado. She was asked to work with the Colorado Judicial Department to develop a statewide evaluation procedure for lawyers, jurors, probation, parole, and court staff. Since 1997, Professor Sterling has been one of the co-principal investigators on the After the JD study. After the JD is the first national longitudinal study of careers of lawyers in the US. Professor Nancy Richmond is a close friend and collaborator. One could not ask for a better friend, and she has been a part of my family well, before my children were born. My children think of her as an aunt, and so does my dog, who lives with her whenever I travel. <laughs> In her attempt to break into the boys' club of the male faculty, Joyce devoted many hours to understanding the game of football so she could talk the talk. As a result, Joyce is now a rabid Broncos fan. Ten years ago, Joyce Sterling walks into my office and says, I have season tickets to the Broncos. I'm thinking about giving them up. What do you think? And I said, are you insane? Since then, we shared the tickets, and we are very excited about the Peyton Manning era. From Hollywood to Honolulu to Nova Scotia to Denver, and through her work analyzing the status of women and minorities in the legal profession, Joyce's quest for knowledge never ceases. She is a wonderful contributor to the University of Denver faculty, an inspiration to her students, and a most worthwhile recipient of the Robert B. Yagi Excellence in Teaching Award. Congratulations to Joyce Sterling.